that the emergency steps we take are not the problem long term. The problem long term are the, are, are the problems that I talked about earlier. We've, we've got, we had two tax cuts that weren't paid for, two wars that weren't paid for. We've got a population that's getting older. It's, we're all demanding services, but our taxes have actually substantially gone down. And so the, the challenge, I think, for the Tea Party movement is to identify specifically what would you do. Well, here's it's, it's, it's not enough just to say, get control of spending. I think it's important for you to say, you know, I'm willing to cut veterans' benefits. Or I'm willing to cut Medicare or Social Security benefits. Or I'm willing to see these taxes go up. What you can't do, which is what I've been hearing a lot from the other side, is saying we're going to control government spending, we're going to propose four trillion dollars of additional tax cuts, and that magically somehow things are going to work. Um, now, some of these are very difficult choices. We, we were talking earlier about the business community and, and how it feels. We haven't raised corporate, inco uh, corporate tax rates since I've been in, in office. Uh, people keep on saying that I might, but we haven't. We haven't proposed it. They want you to cut them. The, the, and what I've said is, if you can lower corporate tax rates by eliminating loopholes so that it's tax neutral, I'm happy to work with you. We've said, for example, that uh, we don't want, uh, right now, dividends are taxed at 15%. Uh, they used to be taxed at 39% under, under the Clinton administration. And what we've said is, let's take them up to 20. That would be a reasonable uh, position that would still be pro-business, but wouldn't be uh, so draining on uh, the Treasury. So we've got a bunch of these decisions that have to be made. Uh, I think we can all have a reasonable argument, and we're going to have some differences in terms of how to go about it. You know, some of us may want a few more cuts, some of us may want higher revenues, but understand that there are facts and a reality there that uh, go beyond the political rhetoric, and, and we're not going to be able to solve this problem just by yelling at each other. Let, let, let me ask you about one more specific thing the Tea Party argues that you're very well positioned to speak to. Uh, there's some in the Tea Party who argue that the Constitution has been perverted in a way that gives government license to get involved in any activity, the Commerce Clause. You're a former constitutional law professor. Yeah. What's your analysis of that? Well, look, the, the, the truth of the matter is that um, the, the federal government is probably less intrusive now than it was 30 years ago. It, our tax rates are lower now than they were under Ronald Reagan. They're much lower than they were under Dwight Eisenhower. Uh, it is true that there are some areas that we regulate more, but you know what? The truth is everybody here probably thinks it's a pretty good idea that we regulate the food industry, for example, so we don't get E. coli and salmonella. Well, that requires somebody overseeing businesses, most of whom are trying to do a good job, but some of them may not have the safety provisions in place to do that. I think most people here think it is a good idea to make sure that uh, you're not cheated if you uh, are seeking a mortgage. Well, that requires some oversight. So we're always going to try to balance uh, regulation with making sure that people can go about their business and go about their lives without a bunch of uh, people meddling in it. Having enacted a lot of stimulus and realizing the political yeah. appetite is drained, are you prepared now to say that in terms of getting the economy going, mm -hmm. the era of big government's over and it's time to stand up the private sector and that's the focus of your policy? My, my entire focus right now is to make sure that the private sector uh, is thriving, is growing, is investing. As I said, that's why we haven't increased taxes on corporations. We are not proposing. Uh, dividends uh, to go up, uh, taxation on dividends to go up above 20 percent. I think we've been very responsible stewards. I do believe that we've got to make sure that basic rules of the road in are in place and that consumers, workers, ordinary folks out there uh, aren't taken advantage of by sharp business practices. And I don't think that uh, there's anything about that that's inherently anti-business. Some of the business owners that we heard today, you know, they are making a profit by offering a good service at a good price. 
All right, let's go and, to and that's who we want to see rewarded. Go to Anthony Scaramucci, who is familiar to some viewers of our uh, 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 network because he appears on CNBC as a hedge fund manager. And I also went to law school with you with uh, Brian Mathis. It's great uh, to back see you. in the day. Um, you, you've, you've, you've done very well. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, right. That's great. And, and, and if I fouled you on the hoop court, it wasn't intentional. I, I remember you that. that. <laughs> you, you would remember if I fouled you. I got a low center of gravity. The, 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 the question I have, sir, and this is something I really, you know, a lot of my friends are thinking about. Listen, I represent the Wall Street community. We have felt like a pinata. Maybe you don't feel like you're whacking us with a stick, but we certainly feel like we've been whacked with a stick. So I certainly think that Main Street and Wall Street are connected. And if we're going to heal the society and make the economy better, how are we going to work towards that healing Wall Street and Main Street? Question number one. Mm -hmm. And then question number two has to do with job growth. I was doing a calculation. I, I run Skybridge Capital. It's got $7.4 billion under management. And I'm thinking about hiring new people. Mm -hmm. A $50,000 worker in New York City, mm -hmm. if I want to pay the full freight on the health care, right. plus the FICA and all the other stuff, it's about $90,000, sir. Mm -hmm. That woman, man or woman, is going to take home about 35000 It seems very, very disconnected. And I think that's one of the main reasons why we don't have a lot of job growth. So two questions. When are we going to stop wagging at the Wall Street pinata? And how are we going to fix that arbitrage so that we can create jobs in our society? Right. Well, well, on the first issue. Um, and I promise not to foul you if we play hoops again. <laughs> the, uh, uh, on the first question, uh, I, I think it would be useful to go back and look at the speeches that I've made, including a speech, by the way, I made back in 2007 on Wall Street before Lehman's had gone under, in which I warned about uh, a potential crisis if we didn't start reforming practices on Wall Street. At the time, I said exactly what you said, which is Wall Street and Main Street are connected. Uh, we need a vibrant, vital financial sector that is investing in businesses, investing uh, in uh, uh, jobs, investing in our people, providing consumers loans so they can buy products. All that's very important, and we want that to thrive. But we've got to do so in a responsible way. Now. Uh, you know, I, I have been amused over the last uh, couple of years, this sense of somehow uh, me beating up on Wall Street. I think most folks on Main Street feel like they got beat up on. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and, and I'll be honest with you, there, there's a, probably a big chunk of the country. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on a second. There, there's, a, there's a big chunk of the country uh, that thinks that I have been too soft yep. on Wall Street. Uh, that's probably the majority, not, not the minority. Now, what I've tried to do is just try to be practical. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure that at any given point over the last two years, there have been times where I have been frustrated, and I'll, I'll give you some examples. I mean, when I hear folks who say that somehow we're being too tough on Wall Street, but after a huge crisis, the top 25 hedge fund managers took home a billion dollars in income that year. A billion. That's the, a that, that's the average for the top 25. I'm, you know, uh, and, I, and yet Forbes magazine is, puts on their cover a story saying he has an anti-colonial attitude, or Steve Schwartzman, a big figure on Wall Street, says their approach to the financial regulation uh, and taxation is like Hitler invading, right. invading Poland. Where well, does that come uh, well, from? I, I, I mean, I, I don't know where that comes from. I mean, I, th th that's my point, I guess. Uh, it, it is a two-way street. If you're making a billion dollars a year, after a very bad financial crisis where 8 million people lost their jobs and small businesses can't get loans, then uh, I think that you shouldn't be feeling put upon. Uh, the question should be, how can we work with you to continue to grow the economy? Uh, one, a big source of frustration, uh, this quote that you just said, uh, this was me acting like Hitler going into Poland, had to do with a proposal to change a rule called carried interest, which basically allows hedge fund managers to uh, get taxed at 15 percent on their income. Now, everybody else is getting taxed at, well, a lot more. <laughs> the, the secretary of the hedge fund is probably being taxed at 25, 28, right? What, 
and, and these folks are making, uh, getting taxed at 15. Now, there are complicated economic arguments as to why this isn't really income, this is more like capital gains and so forth, which is a fair argument to have. I, I have no problem having that argument with hedge fund managers, many of whom I know uh, and, and went to school with, uh, and, and I respect uh, the, their business acumen. But the notion that somehow me saying maybe you should be taxed more like your secretary when you're pulling home a billion dollars or a hundred million dollars a year, I don't think is me being extremist or being anti-business. Uh, and and that, that's the confusion I, we get into. Um, I, I do want to be fair about your other point, which is uh, the costs of workers. Uh, one of the things, one of the laws that we passed this year was the Hire Act, which said we'll give you a tax break if you hire a new worker so to, to try to reduce some of those costs. And in some high cost places like New York City, the cost for the average worker may be even higher than it is uh, if you are uh, in, in some other places. Why not a payroll tax holiday for exactly the yeah. issue that he mentioned? Well, this is something that we've examined. Uh, and, you know, we are going to be working with businesses to see does it make sense for us to initiate some additional incentives in order to hire. The one thing that I want to make clear about though is, is our health care bill didn't substantially add to employers uh, health care costs. It exempts uh, from any kind of costs for employers uh, folks who have 50 employees or less. What we've said is if you've got more than 50 employees then you should be able to give them health care and we will give you tax incentives basically we'll pay for a we'll give you a, a break that's as much of a third of your costs for their health care premiums uh, be, and the reason we're doing that is because if you're not paying for it then taxpayers are paying for it we're all paying for it because on average these emergency room visits for people who don't have health insurance add up to an extra thousand dollars on each of our premiums who do have health insurance. Did, did I understand you just to say a moment yeah. ago that you are continuing to examine a payroll tax holiday and may be open to that as a way of spurring hiring? I, I, John, I think here's uh, what you can rest assured is we are willing to look at any idea that's out there that we think will help. But we've got to do so in a responsible way. We've got to make sure that whatever it is that we're proposing uh, gives us the best bang for the buck. A lot of ideas that look good on paper, when you start digging into them, it turns out that they're more complicated. And, and they may end up not working the way they're supposed to. Uh, and we've got to be self-critical. There are times where, uh, for example, on the, in the housing market, uh, we were very successful in keeping the housing market alive at a time when it, it had completely shut down. Uh, but a lot of folks are still losing their homes because they've lost their job. Uh, they're just having trouble making their mortgage payments. And what we've been trying to do is to get the banks to work with uh, the borrower to see can you adjust the mortgage so that if they're willing to make a payment uh, that they can stay in their homes. Hasn't the experience that, proven though that those interventions haven't worked and basically the housing market has got to find its bottom and then get back well, up? Well th this was the